Hi everyone, welcome back. So this is the Cooler Master Master Air MA612 Stealth ARGB. A bit of an oxymoron there because on one hand it says Stealth and on the other hand it says ARGB. So this cooler retails at RM379 which is about 90 US and let me tell you more about what I like and what I did not like about this cooler. Let's start from the top. The top comes with a removable plate, which is a nice touch for whatever reasons. Perhaps you want to mod the plate or you just want to reduce the height of the cooler slightly. The MA612 comes with two sickle flow fans, also from Cooler Master. The fan at the rear is an interesting one. It's a reverse fan, which is nice. And both of them have RGB. However, they are using proprietary RGB connectors. So your ARGB connection, you require additional a Y cable to say if you want to connect to the motherboard. And if you want to connect to the controller, you have to connect even more. So that's a bit of a hassle. And I did not like that they use proprietary connectors. Moving on, assembly is easy. This is what the mount looks like. However, the mount is loose when you place it on the board and then it being loose it means that it is also difficult to find the location to mount the screw that is on the heatsink so even if you manage to align it remember to press and then twist it as much as you can to tighten the screw now the fans on the MA612 are held in place by a simple clip just peel it a bit and you can remove it and there's plenty clearance for RAM. It's just that if you ever want to remove it when it's from the system, you have to learn how to angle it for a bit. Now let's begin with the benchmark. Remember the price is RM379 and I'm comparing it to a Noctua NHD15, which is more than RM500. USD, it's about what, 120, 130-ish. So I am comparing it to a much more expensive cooler and here's the result you can see it's less than two degrees celsius apart which is very good and then i tested the ma612 with just the front fan and the rear fan of which i found that it actually works very well even with the front fan alone so the rear fan it's kind of pointless actually it just dropped the temperature by 0.2 degrees celsius and mind you, I'm actually using a Ryzen 5 3600 XT, which is a rather warm processor. So what I think is that it would have been great if Cooler Master reduced the rear fan. I know it's a nice single flow fan. I like it too. But imagine this, by removing this fan, you can actually reduce the price by about RM50, which is about US 12. I mean, I saw the price of the reverse single flow fan. It's about RM50. So, Imagine this, a cooler that retails at just about RM320, 330 and performs this well, it will have been of an even greater value. Overall, I really like this product. And speaking of which, some of you might be thinking whether it fits into their ever popular NR200, NR200P casings. Unfortunately, I've tested it and it does not work um, even with the uh, this um, panel removed it's still too tall and unable to fit into the NR200P as with a glass panel I'm referring to so it's a uh, it's uh, quite disappointing considering that the NR200P is a runaway success however Cooler Master did not follow up with coolers that can actually fit I mean this cooler with, with just a bit of height shorten would have fit it perfectly. Unfortunately, Cooler Master did not do that. Well, regardless, I still think that this is a great cooler and I'm giving it a gold badge. All right, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Coming soon on Gold Fries. One of the things coming up in this lab is my new tiny casing. You guys want to guess what specs that I'm going to have in this build? Well, feel free to comment in the comment section. Definitely, you guys should look forward to it.